Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome back to the ongoing This Week in Game Development. Quick recap of the world of news ending on the day of, uh, let's say, November the 14th of 2017. Generally, this is a weekly recap, but for two reasons, I am not really up to date. First off, there hasn't been a lot happening. Second off, I've been out of commission. So this is going to be a quick recap of the last couple weeks of game development. The biggest stories, things that have happened, uh, things you should be aware of in the world of game development. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Uh, probably one of the bigger releases in this period of time was Unreal Engine 4.15 Preview was released. Now, of course, that big caveat there is Preview. This is not ready for prime time. This is not to be used in production. Of course, people are going to go ahead and do that anyways, but uh, they probably should it. Now, this guy is a pretty good solid release. There's... Uh well, actually, every Unreal Engine release is massive with the amount of stuff that's in it. And, you know, this is no exception. You can have an idea here, the kind of stuff we've got updated going on. Now, the one really nice thing with this update is the uh, ability to bake uh, blueprints, which is their visual coding system, to C++ code is now considered production ready. Uh, so it's not an experimental feature anymore. You can now go ahead and use this and expect it to work. So it's going to be a nice way of you can design using blueprints, but get C++-like performance out of it. So that's definitely a big part of this release but there's a ton to it definitely go through the release notes and um, also since this was done there was also another update in the so preview release 2 was also released in this period of time uh, a smaller release this month was uh, tiled open source level uh, level editor uh, 0 0.18.1 was released tiled's a great little level editor uh I have a full tutorial series that you get you up and going. It's completely free, completely open source for creating 2D maps, both um, orthographic projection and isographic and actually hexagonal, if that's your thing. Um, definitely worth checking out. This release is mostly all about the bug fixes. Another major release this month was Lumberyard Beta 1.7 was released. And something to kind of go along with this, and I don't really have a news story on it, but during the same period of time, CryEngine or um, CryTech, the makers of CryEngine, basically self-destructed. So if you're an Unreal Engine developer, your money is now on Lumberyard. Now, CryEngine failed to pay their employees, uh, closed a bunch of studios, and then they lost um, Star Citizen, which was probably their marquee game in development, all in the same period of time. So the future of CryEngine is really Lumberyard at this point in time. Uh, so Lumberyard release 1.7 brought uh, is now to the table. 403 new features have been added, including a new asset browser, um, been a while since this was out. New UI improvements, um, improved uh, VR performance, uh, 2015 Visual Studio support, hopefully 20, was it 17 is coming soon. Um, another release in this period of time is Hacks 3.4.0 was released, uh, you know, an update in the core language of Hacks itself. Um, there's This is just the release since the last sub-release. It's actually a pretty major release of Hacks 3.4. Um, of course, in this period of time, we've also seen a number of Unity patches, both to their older 5.3.x uh, series of um, code branch, or their 5.5.1, the newest or the most current branch. So there have been, of course, the bugs and improvements there, uh, updated to the newest levels of the Oculus Rift, and of course, loaded with features. They both updated to the newest Oculus Rift. Uh, another thing that happened in this period of time, this one's kind of an interesting, semi-controversial decision, is Construct 3 released um, details of their upcoming release. And boy, oh, did they piss some people off. Uh, Construct 3 has gone, if you've never heard of it, Construct 2 is a visual programming system. Basically, behind the scenes, it's an HTML5 game engine, but you use uh, a visual flowchart style way of developing code. You can actually see it in action right here in this really fuzzy, uh, this, this is Construct 3, but uh, you get an idea of what you're dealing with here. Well, Construct 3 is changing a couple things. First off, they're going browser only, which is an ooh moment for me. It's only going to run in Chrome for now. Now, they have clarified since that they can make a standalone version, and hopefully they will make a standalone version, but for now, it is going to run only inside of the Chrome browser. It works offline, so you don't have to always be connected to the internet, but you are going to be doing your development in the browser. Now, I like browser-based tools as an option, but I don't like being forced into them. I prefer my game engines to be standalone, my game engine tools to be standalone, so let's hope and see that standalone action does come out. Uh, another major change in Construct 3 is they're going subscription only. And this is where they lose people. Some people hate subscription models with a passion. I'm kind of on the fence about it. You know, if it's a tool I definitely get value from and there's a lot of frequent updates, uh, I'm not so bad with a subscription model. Uh, I actually pay a subscription fee, for example, for uh, the WebStorm HTML5 Java code editor from... Uh, 
IntelliJ or uh, NetBeans, uh, NetBrain, Ugh, NetBrains. I, I am very much a fan of it. JetBrains. God, I can't speak today. Um, and I get my value worth out of that prescri- subscription, but I'm not so sure when it comes to game engines what I like. A lot of times a game engine, you are actually stuck with a very specific version of it for the lifetime of that game. And, you know, you don't constantly upgrade to the latest and greatest because you break all kinds of things as you're going forward. So then a subscription model, you know, a subscription model works well when you're, you know, in early development. But as you get further along the stage, it's less and less valuable. Now, what's interesting with this one, though, is a big part of the old construction way of doing things was there was a base price for the package. You know, so there's a free version, a pro version, and then you bought exporters. Well, now all those exporters are going to be included as part of that subscription fee. So for certain people, it's going to be a great value. For other people, it is going to be the end of the world or at least end of their time with uh, Skira's Construct. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one turns out. Since then, they've actually come up and done a couple more posts, basically, you know, actually saying the merits of this new release as opposed to just saying, here are the new things and here's what you're going to have to do. They, they really blotched this one from a PR perspective. And there was quite a bit of a uh, backlash over it. Had they done it a little bit differently, it might have gone over better. Now, there is going to be a certain segment of the population that hears subscription, screw you, I'm done, gone. Uh, but, you know, had they... Had they broached it with here's all the new features you get, here's the strengths, here's the advantages, you know, you get all these exporters, etc. You may have had better buy in, but they really did this wrong. Here's all the negatives, and then they followed up a day later with a different blog post, which, ooh, mistake. All right, moving on. Uh, Krita 3.1.2 was released. Krita's been awesome. Uh, it's an open source painting package, uh, it's been improving rapidly. The last release saw it had animation support added. Uh, this one actually adds sound support, so you can actually import audio and have it export with your. Uh, your sound, you can use it for synchronization of your animation to the audio, etc. And you can have it export out to oh, different file formats. I know the import formats are Wave, MP3, Aug Vorbis, and FLAC formats, uh, but you can actually have it export as well. Uh, I don't know where the heck it went. But it, it's definitely a very cool release, plus, of course, a number of new features and bug fixes, etc. So again, Krita is completely free, completely open source. If you haven't checked it out already, do so. It's a great little painting package that's getting better and better every day. Next up, we saw Torque 3D 3.1 always released. Now, Torque 3D is um, started life as the game engine behind Tribes. It was open source. Well, actually, it was commercialized, then it was open sourced, and now it's well, open sourced under a different group of people. Uh, it's MIT licensed completely, as I said, open source. The big thing about the 3.10 release is that it adds macOS and IPv6 support. IPv6 is getting increasingly more popular or more required. In fact, you need to now support IPv6 to be published on uh, Apple stores. Uh, so it is getting more important, of course. And then a uh, number of the libraries that depend on have been updated to most current versions. Uh, OpenVR, which is HTC Vive support, has been added, etc. Another game engine release in this period of time was SFML 2.4.2. We'll call this one mostly a bug fix release. Not a whole lot exciting happening there, but you know, it's nice to see an update there. If you've never heard of it, SFML stands for Simple Fast Media Library. Uh, It's an underlying C++ um, 2D slash windowing slash audio slash networking uh, framework. Great little package. I've done two tutorials on it if you're interested in learning more. I do have two full sets of tutorials on Game From Scratch that will get you up and going with SFML. And finally, probably the biggest news of the week is that Valve announced they are killing off Steam's green light. It's a double-edged sword. As a Steam user, I hate green light. As a Steam developer, potentially, green light is sort of one of the preeminent ways for small indies to get discovered and to publish their games. Now, don't get me wrong, they're not getting rid of it completely. They're actually replacing it with something called Steam Direct. So green light as it stands now allows you to put your game out there, the community votes on it, the most popular games are kind of getting promoted and available on the store. It's kind of turning into all kinds of shovelware and crap is getting pushed through. We're seeing developers abuse the system, developers publishing 12, 20, 30 games a year, gaming the voting system, getting promoted up where they shouldn't be. So basically, green light It was a cool idea, cool concept, and it's a hot mess now. And their solution to it, well, the devil's going to be in the details because some people are not going to be happy with where this went. But what they're replacing it with is Steam Direct. And Steam Direct basically is going to get rid of that, all that voting crap. So basically, you can put your game there as long as it passes, you know, the requirements test to be on Steam, you know, it runs through a suite of tests. It, It doesn't, it's not a virus, no malware, blah, blah, blah. You're good to go. And you're up and you're on the store. And, you know, they've actually kind of started incorporating a lot of the voting and the the meta systems from Greenlight into the proper Steam. So some of the discoverability could still be there, but I think it's definitely going to lack. Now, where the controversy is coming in 
is there's going to be a price tag attached. And part of this makes sense. You know, if you if you have to pay a little bit of money to promote your game on Steam, you don't get shady crap going on. So just last week on Reddit, or this week on Reddit, someone posted about how their like Game Jam game was being sold on Steam. And yeah, that's crappy. You know, granted, technically, legally, it was allowed. You know, it was released under an open source license. That's the downside to open source, folks. You know, you do have to be careful what license you release under. But nobody wants to see something that they put their work into and just shared with the community commercialized by some asshole who basically, you know, just submitted the green light. Off it went. Well, now you're going to have a price tag attached, and that's going to stop that kind of stuff. So you are going to have to pay money for each game you submit to Steam Direct. How much money is the question mark? And this is kind of weird, actually, because every other app store has moved away from this. It used to be Microsoft used to charge a submit to the store. I believe they got rid of their fee. Uh, used to have to pay $99 a year to be part of the Apple network. I believe that's all gone now. Uh, Google Play Store, there might still be a fee. I don't think so, though. Like They basically all moved away from fees. Well, Valve is moving towards one. And boy, oh, what a fee. Because you're looking at the low end is 100 bucks, And even 100 bucks is enough to put a lot of people off. Now, if you're looking at really honestly selling a game... <sighs> you know what, you should be able to eat a $100 loss if it comes down to it. But the upper end is five grand, And if they're going to charge five grand to submit your game to Steam, that's the death of the small indie. Done. You know, like a lot of indie games, if they gross five grand, that's, uh, you know, a huge success. So if you're going to have to, like, make at least five grand to make submitting it to Steam like, even worthwhile, God, the cost of failure has gotten even higher. So it really, it all comes down to where they go in that price range. And it also comes down to how much they promote it. You know, like these indie stores are a great idea and work really well until the promotion goes away. And I think you're kind of seeing Valve lose their love a little bit of green light here. So you're probably gonna also see them lose their promotion of it a little bit here. And, um, you know, it's just a natural consequence of how things happen. The XNA store went through all this as well. You know, you had you had a couple people that got really successful off XNA, but then Microsoft kind of emphasized it less and less and less, and it's dead. You know, and that's what happened. So is Greenlight about to die? I don't think so. I think Steam Direct will work. I think it'll work well for uh, small commercial indie studios, but the, the the individual developer bootstrapped on no money really is going to get hurt by this decision. Uh, but then again, me as an end user of Steam, God, there's just so much crap being pushed at me now. So I kind of don't mind a little bit more quality check. But the problem here is Steam Direct is not talking about curation. There's no gatekeeper anymore. So anyone can shovel as much crap up they want as they want up onto Steam still. It's just they got to pay money to do it now. So really, you're only going to keep out you know, the scammers, the the smaller market devs and that kind of stuff. So I, I don't think it solves the problem for the most part. You know, it's going to cut back the noise, but the crap still gets through. So it's just really going to cost indie devs. So I'm not sure how I'm going to, how this one's going to turn out. Uh, I don't have any titles published on um, Steam Greenlight, so I don't really have a horse a game in the, a horse in this race, but I do understand how this is definitely a bad thing. Now, do keep in mind, there are other markets that you can get your game promoted on. There's HIO, which is getting more and more popular. Uh, Humble Bundle is getting, the, seems to be the promotion mechanism of choice. So there are other stores out there. Plus, there's also Newgrounds type HTML stores where people are selling um, games as well. And more and more game engines can target those, uh, you know, can make an HTML5 compatible game. So there are other avenues of promoting your game than just Greenlight. And Greenlight is kind of going away as one of those choices. So, you know what? I hate to end on a negative note or a potentially negative note, uh, but that's pretty much the last really important story of the week. Again, I am so sorry for the pause in updates. Um, fortunately, not a whole lot happened, but I, I am back to normal now. Everything is working well. So hopefully you should see some more regular video updates from me. There's just not enough game dev news most weeks to make this a full weekly series, so it'll probably be more like a bi-weekly series, but I uh, hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please do click like, and I will talk to you again soon. See y'all later. Bye.